everybody. Welcome back to Classic of Tea. The, the Welcome back of... to Sunday Tea Book, The Classic of Tea, Chapter 4. We are on Chapter 4. four. Get all my fingers on the Instagram cam. Hey, Skazam. Welcome and welcome YouTube. Welcome Instagram. For a little while, Instagram, you got to jump over to YouTube. Hey, uh, not Simar join on Instagram. Whoa, here we go. Uh -huh. Sunday Tea Book, Episode 7, The Classic of Tea, Chapter 4. Mm. Welcome to you all. I assume the thunderstorm is uh, pretty widespread here. <laughs> We're having thunderstorm forecasts too. Are they having that over uh, all over the place, I guess? Yeah. Whew. Well, let us know what's in your cup as always. We're always interested to uh, hear what you're brewing, what you're sipping, what you're steeping, and what the tasting notes are. Today we are enjoying a wonderful uh, tea, a rock tea. I love rock tea, a weed silan. Can't wait to sip into this one. Many of you, mm. or some of you, or maybe none of you, may know that Bayat silan is uh, one of my favorite teas. This is mm -hmm. tea is related, cultivar wise, mm -hmm. but obviously a, a quite a different process made as a rock tea. Um, so we'll give you guys a look at the leaf, the dry yeah. leaf. So hard to can see. Can you put the big screen? Yeah, let's put the big one. Oh, there yeah, we so go. So I can see what's going on. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, there we not. go. Here we go. We can have a look at So it. Instagram oh, people, nice. if you were on YouTube, you would see the mm. just beautiful, giant, full screen of gorgeous, <laughs> dark, with the tinge of that... Um, um, typical wee wee look. Typical wee roast look. Yeah. That uh, longer leaves, uh, yeah. not as densely rolled as the uh, bowl-shaped mm. uh, oolong, mm. and maybe just here. Yeah, we'll a give him a bit. peek. We'll give yeah. him a peek. Yeah, that's what we're brewing and today. And then I think we should have a sniff. Kind of a rock. Let's, let's have a sniff of that. Yep, while I rinse off the heat oh, Interesting. Compared to other rock teas, I would say this has a little bit of the dry leaf. Has a little bit of um, spiciness, and by that I mean sort of mm. like... Um, clovey, cinnamony kind of spiciness. Gentle, mild, okay? Not really uh, popping in that domain, but something interesting in that region. This will smell Under better. There. I love the warmed up. Yeah, the one. warmed guy one really provokes the aroma. Mm. Let's see how that changed. Mm. I know what you mean by spicy. Yeah, a little bit more of the chocolatey notes are coming out, the dark chocolatey notes, now that it's the warmed guy one. But I still get that. Mm. Oh, and I got some mineral. The yeah. minerals already sneaking into the nose and the aroma. That mm -hmm. is delightful. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, that is going to be a really good one. Good. Okay. So let's see it. Anybody else? Uh, oh, Simmerjeet made it over to YouTube. Nice. And uh, welcome to Tobias on YouTube. Welcome to... Uh, Welcome to Sunday Tea Book Episode 7, The Classic of Tea, Chapter 4. Wow, that's a lot of numbers. Everything's going to be fine. Do not panic. I'm going to leave the camera on while you brew. People might okay. like to watch that. And while uh, she brews, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what is Sunday Tea Book. For those of you that are new to the uh, channel and to this, uh, this weekly broadcast, Sunday Tea Book is uh, where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is uh, full of great information about Chinese tea and, and or its culture, and it's either not available in English or the translation is a little bit um, off the mark or could use some clarification. And we review that with you live and uh, translate it or clarify it. So you might wonder, geez, why do you do something that sounds so boring live? <laughs> you know, reading a book, uh, translating a book. Why don't you just post that on your website and have that as a resource? Well, we do just that. The link is down below. It is posted there. However, why do we do it live is simply because in the years, over the years, going over all of these Chinese tea questions, the history, the culture, the history and culture of Chinese tea is long, wide, and deep. It's huge. And there are so many little nuances and fun things to discover in asking the question, in arriving at the finished translation that to not do it with you would seem to be a big loss for us and for you. For us, because we love to hear your questions, your input, your help even. We're not mm. pro-translators. Your help with maybe picking that right word mm. for the what we're trying to describe. You know, when it's organic and squishy and we haven't quite resolved <laughs> on it. Um, and for uh, you, because you get to see firsthand kind of the process, what's going on. You get to ask those questions. So, And how has it gone? Well, 
We're in season two. We, this is our third publication that we're doing. I didn't miss any, right? Mm -hmm. We've done um, Jian Li Wu's fantastic book, uh, China Tea. We did uh, Chen Chihuan's uh, seminal work, Tea Classification and Theory and Practice. And now we're doing Lu Yu's Classic of Tea. Holy crow, what a list of publications. Um, and it's been so fun. Uh, you're back, we're back. We obviously all love it. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is all about. And that is why we do it. Mm. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to sip the tea and tell you a bit more about my tea and wait to listen, wait to hear a bit more about your tea. Welcome, mm -hmm. Jubai Jia, uh, so having a the... Sichuan green. Oh, nice. The other day we were talking about how hot it is in Sichuan right now. Anyway, this tea, when I'm having it, I was like, uh, if you ever purchase that on the website, I strongly suggest you grab the other one as well, the Bai Ya Qilan. That red same cultivar and that really would demonstrate like when i look at this tea the dry leaf the 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 how should i say smell the warm leaf it really has that uh, i was k uh, well i would say like 90 percent that i smell and i see is we uh rock tea the rock tea strong profile there then mm. with a little bit of that creamy floral Mm. that tease you it's like a gardenia style of a floral what i mean it's a heavier like a not light and mm. floaty like more a orchid thick and orchid. creamy yeah it's a thick mm. and creamy kind of thing. you would think about flower sweet flowers like a mm. gardenia like a, even some peony would have that and then once i brew it it's almost like i would say 50 50 of uh, we rock tea vis-a-vis mm. -vis, um by this cultivar thing so by compare this two mm. tea together even have a side by side at home uh it really helps demonstrate that um cultivars impact in this and in this tea i would say this cultivar is pretty dominating it's pretty pretty impactful mm. right and it and having the same cultivar with two process obviously is going to highlight that process aspect too yeah. so if you want to uh support the channel that's a great way to do it go down to our there's links to our website down below you can get some tea there you can get wu yi tzi lan in fact you can get wu yi tzi lan in the sip along six pack which uh we put together which features the Wu Yi Tea Lan that we're having today, plus the next five teas, one from each of the six Chinese tea categories. So you're gonna get an oolong, a dark, a black, a white, a yellow, and a green tea in that pack, 25 grams of each, 25% off. So that's a great deal. And then throw a Bayat Tea Lan on top of it so that you can do that side by side. Mm. It would be an awesome way to support the channel. Of course, you could also smash the thumbs up or give us a wave or a like or a whatever it is you guys do on Instagram mm. while you log out of Instagram and head on over to YouTube so you don't miss tea trivia time. You do not want to miss that. <laughs> but Instagram, we're going to say goodbye soon because we don't do the whole show on Instagram. We just can't. It's quite a production. There's lots of fancy stuff going on. So... <laughs> Which I'm kind of half kidding because it's yeah. a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, local cable style, but that's okay. <laughs> Content matters more than production value. So right. hop on over to YouTube so you don't miss Tea Trivia time. Yeah. We're going to sign out here soon. Right. And I think I'm going to sign out on Instagram now, actually. That's <laughs> I how thought soon, that's what you said. <laughs> that's how soon it is. I'm reaching in. It's the reach in Instagram. That's the bye-bye reach in. Okay, bye -bye. cherish at random, um, the English Tea Room, everybody. Thanks for joining on Instagram. Jump over to YouTube to see the rest of the show, and we will catch you over there. Bye-bye. All right. So a little bit about uh, this. Because uh, previously, as Phil mentioned, our Sunday Tea Book is mostly about um, not correcting, not, not about correcting, but to explaining those uh, uh, Mm. Uh, translations that are a little bit off or mm. could lead to some misunderstanding. Right. But this and even time, how they got yes, kind yeah, of twisted yeah. up. Like exactly. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, but this time with the, the classic of tea, we are not going to mm. uh, follow every character in the classic of tea. Mostly is to uh, explain what's going on. And on the translation on the website, you will notice that it is very uh, weird, bizarre. 
because it's I almost try not poetic. to. It's yeah. almost poetic at certain points. Like yeah. it's a really which is the original form of the classic of tea. Mm. So we save all those explanatory. So I try not to fill in all the explanation to make the sentences cohesive and uh, understandable for modern people, so that we can see the, the more original work and uh, yeah. explain those weird stuff that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Here, live here, right? And because I think if we if we made it like a uh, what, what's the word I've been using? If we made it like a narrative and made mm. all the grammar tight and tidy, mm. there's a good chance we would have to pick an interpretation. But here we're going to discuss the ways it can be interpreted, and it's better like we didn't want to rail it down one way. No, yeah. it's not. And one also, way. this is not. I think the focus is not just about the classic tree. Is mm. by ex planning the classic of tea, we're also hoping to provide some information you, that is useful for today's tea lover. And the, the reference I'm using is the classic of tea, classic of tea narrative and commentary by mm. Mr. Wu Juenou, uh, the founding father of uh, modern Chinese, Chinese tea industry. And it's a very well written, well researched, uh, a more like academic style of book. Like when he point out that there are certain characters that has different, uh, different opinions in what the character is. He would give you all the explanation of different characters and why this and why he decided to use the specific one in this version. Yeah. So it's a very good resource and uh, I just wanted to uh, give the credit to the original uh, writer and how important and how much I learned from reading that book. Yeah, huge undertaking as well yeah. that took him far more than, you know, it wasn't a one, two year book, it was sort of a life work towards the end of 10 years, I think we said. Mm. Spent ten years on it. Not just him reviewing it. Many other experts in the uh, in the tea field peer reviewed the work because it was. Uh, it's really um, you know. There's no other way to call it other than an academic work. You're talking mm -hmm. about a, a document from 1,200 years ago. Yeah, there's no easy way to translate that and really dig into it without a full study that he did. So we're leaning on his great. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. I think yep. that's the cliche, right? <laughs> awesome. Yes. Awesome. So it's that time of the week where we do something very serious. Hold your hats. <laughs> We're going to do it. All right. That's right. It goes through this phase. It goes through the phase, the clicky clicky phase. All right, folks, yeah. it is that time of the week. It is the time for us to go to, uh, Oh, I forgot to set it up properly. Good Lord, this is going to be interesting. It is Tea Trivia Time! We're rushed for the beginning. All right, guys, we only have a few seconds left for me to explain to you that Tea Trivia Time is where we just do some fun warm-up questions. They may be related to what we're, what we're talking about. They may not. Today, they're mostly not, so we're just going to have some fun, ask you guys some questions. You're going to punch in the number of your answer, hit enter, so that the computer can pick it up pick it up, do that as quickly as possible so the score will be as correct as possible, but it doesn't matter. We're all here just to have fun. Question number one. Wu Yi Lan is made in what province? Okay, that's related to today because that's exactly what I'm sipping. Wu Yi Lan is made in what province? Is it one, Zhejiang, two, Guangdong, three, Fujian, or four, Anhui? Where is Wu Yi Lan made? Take a stab at it. Take a guess if you don't know, be bold. Put yourself out there. We're all just here to have fun. This is a nice little, uh, oh, hello, Kulu with the green heart. Welcome to the show. Punch the number, hit enter real quick. Maybe your answer will get registered. Where is Wu Yi Lan, the tea that I'm sipping right now, which has great mineral notes, a nice, if you like that floral aspect in your rock tea, it's not overly floral. Don't get that wrong. This is no. not a take one yin, but if you like that, you know, a good rock tea should have that balancing floral note, and this one really has a nice balance. And that creaminess mm, for mm. me is very divine. All right, uh, Jubaijia and I can't read the Tobias both got that right. right. Fujian is the province where Wu Yi is located, hence Wu Yi Tsilan is made there. That is a. Uh, 
uh, a beautiful place if you ever get to visit China. Um, definitely try to visit the Wuyi uh, Nature Reserve, I believe it's called. Uh, we went there, so if you can't make it, check out Chao Ren on our website, genti.ca slash And we have a Chao special Ren. song, a country and western song. A made country just and for western Wuyi. tea song just for Wuyi. All right. <laughs> Taimu Mountain is known for this kind of tea. Is it one, white tea? Is it two, green tea? Is it three, dark tea? Is it four, black tea? What is Taimu Mountain known for? Throw in your guess. Jubai Jia took a wild guess and he got it right on the last one, which is a good, a good lesson for all of you to just put yourself out there, press a number and hit enter. Close your eyes if you have to. Try not to pick a number greater than four. That won't work well for you. <laughs> That's great. Taimu Mountain is another place that uh, I've been so lucky to visit. Um, a tea producer there, Shi Fu and uh, Shi Tai, who's more or less into uh, what I would call semi-retirement, but still wonderful to visit her uh, at Taimu. Uh, they make a great tea, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because you're going to tell me what is Taimu famous for. Is it white tea, green tea, dark tea, or black tea? I see Jubai Jia has submitted his answer as number one. Tobias is going in with number two. Will we cover the whole spread? Oh, way to go, Jubai Jia. Taimu Mountain is indeed known for its white tea. In fact, it is the origin of white tea. There is the mother plant of white tea can be found at uh, Taimu. Um, there's some pictures of that on our website as well. Uh, I'll pop the link to that down below so that you can check it out. Mm. We'll have two... Two tea trips there. Two... 2016, which is the one I'm going to link to. And I think there's a Cha Ren article that covers that as well. Mm. Okay, folks, next question. The modern steps for making green tea could be described as... One, withering and drying. Is it two? Kilgreen, rolling, shaping, and steaming. Is it three? Airing, roasting, steaming, and re-roasting? Or is it, whoops, four? <laughs> Airing, kilgreen, <laughs> shaping, and drying. The modern steps for making green tea. So we've been spending a lot of time, or in fact, the last couple episodes of the classic of tea have right. been centered on the process of Tang Dynasty tea. Quite remarkably different than pretty much anything we see today. Um, you know, kind of straddling the uh, a funky steamed green tea slash dark tea-ish process. Yeah. Uh, we even had the Luyu tea cakes in a while ago, which uh, sold out like that because it's such an interesting thing to try, which were an attempt at reproducing Luyu green tea. This is modern green tea. Enough talking about Luyu green tea. This is modern green tea. So what are the modern steps? I see a couple guesses for one. And Jubai Jia is so far sweeping the board. Number four is the right answer. There's an airing, there's a kill green, of course, the key step in green tea making in modern times, shaping and drying. Those could be known. I kind of threw in um, sort of very deviant steps in all of the other uh, ones. The number one that you guessed, Tobias and, uh, and uh, Kelu, is the steps for white tea, in fact, withering and drying. Very simple in terms of steps, very complicated in terms of getting it right. All mm. right. Next question. Three famous dark teas are, is it one, Tai Guan Yin, Huang Da Cha, and Long Jing? Is it two, Tian Jian? Don't laugh. Okay. Tian Jian. Sorry. <laughs> Tian Jian, Bai Mu Dan, and Pu Ar. Is it three, Pu Ar, Liu Bao Cha, and Fu Juan? Or is it four, Pu Ar, Luan Gua Pian, and Tian Liang Cha? All right, three famous dark teas. This is from uh, a talk I did in 2020 or 2021, I don't remember. I covered all of the tea types. Uh, I can put the link to that down below. It's kind of a little T101. I think it's Chinese T101 or something like that. I'll put the link down below, but take a stab at it. Just take a guess. We're having fun here. We're just warming up. Um, yeah, back in the midst of the pandemic, I did kind of an online fun thing and I covered kind of all the tea types. So uh, just take a guess. Uh, what you think the three famous dark teas are. Mm. Way to go, Jubai Jia and Kalu. Did I say it right? Kalu, yeah. maybe I said yeah. it right. You guys got that one right. Way to go. And I think even Tobias, Tobias got, got it right too. Right Just too. a little bit behind the yeah. clock. That's okay. We're going to give you full marks in our book. You're a hero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Inner yeah. Sun and Vision yeah. also got it right. So that's a sweep. That's going to trigger me to give the winning call. Did... <laughs> that didn't appear. 
Do you hear that, guys? <laughs> anyway, something going wrong with the audio. Let's keep going. <laughs> These three people were major figures in the history of tea. Okay, we're getting, we're getting technical, okay? This is going to be a good one. Three people. These three people were major figures in the history of tea. Was it Song Huizong, Wu Juanong, and Zhu Yuanzhang? Was it Lu Yu, Ma Yun, and Wong Tao? Was it three? Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> number three, Lu Yu, Ip Man, and Li Lian Jie? Or was it number four, Lu Yu, Chan Yixun and Cho Jilun. All right, guys, this is a little bit tricky. So just take a stab at it. I was really nasty with this one, but, but not too bad. Some of, you might, some of you might be laughing at home. You might be having a good time with this. I had a little fun with this. So each of my answers is themed. Of course, one of them is tea themed. That's the right answer. So is the right answer one, Song Hui Zong, Wu Juanong, and Zhu Yuan Zhang? Or is it two, Lu Yu, Ma Yun, and Wong Tao. Oh, Ju Bai Jia took a guess at Lu Yu, Chan Yuk Sun, and Cho Ji Lun. So that number four happens to be Yi Sun Chan and Jay Cho, the uh, two sort of famous Chinese singers. And of course, Lu Yu was thrown in there to kind of trick you guys. So <laughs> all the Lu Yu answers were wrong. That was very nasty of me, so shame on me. Um, but I couldn't help it. So I picked three non Lu Yu T figures Song Hui Zong was a famous emperor who came shortly after uh, Lu Yu in the Song Dynasty. Shortly? Oh, oh, quite a while, quite a while, sorry. A couple hundred years, right? Okay, yes, shortly in couple hundred years. Yeah, not like 10 years. Right. Anyway, way to go everybody, you all did great. Jubai Jia, uh, Tobias and Kalu, great. And also Inner Sun and Vision, you got on the board too. I saw it, we all saw it, we witnessed it here. You're all winners in my book. That was Tea Trivia Time. Let's dive into the classic of tea, chapter. Four. That's pretty cool. And that's Especially how we roll here, okay? That's how we roll. We have a lot of fun. We do nerdy stuff, but we do it in a fun way, all right? I hope you guys had a good time with that. Right? Need to read good more job. tea books good apparently, job. huh? <laughs> no, that, that, that uh, three key figures was a really tricky question. If you didn't, even if you saw my, my video about it, I would no. never remember that. No, right? you never know who else would just throw in that. And I should tell you who the other groups were, right? There okay. was the other groups were, uh, was Jack Kung Ma. Oh. Was Jack, so with Lu Yu, one of them was a business theme. So it had Jack Ma, the owner of uh, uh, Weibo. Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba. And it had um, the CEO of DJI, whose name escapes me already. Wong Tao. Oh, yeah, Wong Tao. So, right. um, so business theme. Then I picked, uh, so what we- Gong Fu stars. Gong Fu, <laughs> which was uh, Jet Li. Which yeah. is which I used his Chinese name, uh, Li 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 Liangjie, and then the other one was Ip Man, which probably many of you recognized. It's not Ip Man, so because uh, he's like the uh, uh, Wu, the what fist uh, Wu Wu Chang. Uh, Yo Chun Chen. Yeah, Yo Chun Chen, but in Cantonese Wu. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Flaming oh, fist or whatever. I just wanted to say, like the Jubai Jie point, Tang Tong Song a long time, a long time. Yes. It's all okay. relative. That's just I was talking of, in geological terms. Yes, yes. It's not a complaint. It's a, a lot of times uh, our habit of talking, uh, mm. like old times. This phrase, okay, the old which, time, which, she uses which I use right? a lot. And it could mean 10 time. years ago or 700 yeah, years ago. Yeah, when we're talking about uh, like uh, history and stuff, I found personally I use uh, that very wildly different, could be mm. just decades, mm. right? And the other day he was telling me how a physicist was talking old times, which his old time was the beginning of the universe. Yeah, Big Bang. Yeah, so is no, he... No, that's not right. It was huh? shortly after the Big Bang, mostly helium and hydrogen in the universe. So, you know, <laughs> old times. Right, <laughs> old times. Just to say those terms, I'm, uh, as I uh, get to... You know, like uh, talk about things with different people and stuff. It also remind myself to be a little bit more Be a little precise. more specific, yeah. Yeah, especially I'm trying to, you know, share some information here and I don't want to mislead anybody. Yeah. My, the better way I could have said that was n not a modern tea person. Mm. That's kind of what I meant. Mm. Just also or just like a couple of hundred years after. Mm, mm. That I think is better. Anyways, yeah. all works. At a certain point, you know, nobody is saying mm. that. Mm. Fun time has to be so precise and stuff. Mm. So this chapter four, we are talking about uh, uh, tools. Rather than uh, chapter two, we're also talking about tools. That is tea making tools. 
this section is talk. Uh, this chapter is talking about uh, tea brewing tools, uh, similar to what we're talking about: mm. guy wands, children mm. pot, and tea cups in today's uh, scenario. And um, the Lu Yu uses use the same. How should I say? The same format as chapter two, which is what's the item, what does it look like, what mm. is made of, what's the rough uh, size or stuff of it. And there are in general eight types, eight types of the thing. And eight tools, you mean? Eight types of the tool, twenty something tools. Whoa! It's a lot of detailed tools. Um, this is going to be fun, guys. Oh, tea tools. Oh, if you oh. like tea wear. Sit down, strap on your seatbelt. This is going to yes. be fun. And just before I dive in too much, what do you? Let's just uh, have a little fun. What do you think of the character of Lu Yu? A, humble. You, oh, okay, got you. B, cocky. What do you think? Just uh, based on what you heard, or what you have been, you know, learned from the chap uh, from our Sunday tea book. I'll review that shortly. Uh, anyway. Just so, in case we didn't say it, because we're okay. diving into it now, is I want to mention that the link to the translated chapter four is down below in the description, um, or at least it should be. I literally popped it in there just before we started. So we have seen in the past, sometimes it takes a while for that to, to appear. So hopefully it's down there. If it's not, head on over to genti.ca um, slash Sunday Tea Book, and you'll find chapter four and the translation there. And you can follow along if you wish. If you don't want to, don't bother. But there you go; it's out there for you. Right. So in the eight times they have, uh, he mentioned uh, there are uh, ones to uh, uh, making the making the fire. You know, like stoves and pots and stuff. Then he has the stuff of boiling tea, boiling the tea, including you know powder the tea. Uh, mm. Spoons measure and put that in all kinds of detailed little tool, uh, then also uh, preparing the tool. Uh, preparing the tea, yeah, you have to roast the tea cake and stuff, right? Oh. Then there's another kind of uh, preparing water, so you don't just get water. He actually used a water filter. <laughs> cool. Did you? You were the the final proof. You don't remember? I. <laughs> I translate it, but I have to say, I, I think we should maybe dive into some of this because mm. I was well, fascinated well. <laughs> with the chapter, but I maybe didn't catch that the water was being filtered because it, you know, again, it's poetic. Yes, because it's a focus it. on the tool. Yes, yes. It's really focused on the tool. And I didn't uh, uh, fully <laughs> just uh, put out the function of that. Just like his original work, it's not said this is a water filter. This is something. It's in his own language and describes that thing, but translate mm. to today's language. It's right. a water filter, and mm. not high tech, right. right. not overly high tech. <laughs> Just a water simple filter. Mm. And mm. then also there's uh, tools to prepare the salt because oh. they put salt. I now you say that I remember it give it a little bambooish flavor. Hey, I yes. remember that, yes. but I didn't think of it as a filter. Yeah. I, but you're right. Basically, if you're running it, oh my goodness me. No, 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 that's, here is the thing, right? What I'm saying is the deduction from the origin. Yes, yes, so, yes, it's, yeah, it makes which good I sense. didn't do in the translation. Uh, so that could be fun. <laughs> and also, how do you drink the tea yourself, like the bowl uh, or cup? Mm. And then also, he cares about, you know, uh, the display. There's a rack for just display. Right then, and there are some tools for cleaning and storage and uh, easy to travel. You see, <laughs> he's also just like us, love to travel with tea. Mm. So in the end, all those tools he mentioned comes in a little basket that you can carry it and you can go anywhere with it. So practical. Right. And uh, so, and if you read about that, you notice when he's describing all those tools and its functions and how it look like and the design. The design actually, besides it's very practical, is also have the combination of uh, art element to mm. make that look elegant, to make that look pretty, right? Otherwise, why do you need to uh, have a display rack? 
Why do you have a special storage case to store it? Right. The whole a, a little box to put everything. Outside the box, you have a little basket to carry. It. So it's a little bit um, elaborated. Would you say? Yeah, it was fair. I noticed when I was translating, just to prove that I was paying attention, that the <laughs> um, that the stove had very detailed. It was a three, if I'm not mistaken, a three-legged stove, which I assume is the water boiling stove, yes. but could also be the roasting stove. I'm not sure. I might have got that mixed up. Mm -hmm. But it had very detailed inscription yes. on each leg. Yes. Had to have a certain inscription. So I thought that was quite um, beautiful, like uh, and detailed. And I think it was like earth, wind, and fire. Yeah, it was really uh, interesting. First of all, the stove. What is, the stove is designed by him, and he is very specific of oh, what's in. That's why this mm. design is uh, how should I say? It's not uh, out of nowhere. The stove per se. This in Chinese we call that ding. This shape is ancient. It's ding. a very in ancient. Uh, like you would. Uh, I think that's it there, right? Yes. Mm. You will notice this shape in a lot of uh, um, archaeology, archaeological okay. discoveries for thousands of years ago. It's a, it's a tool to, it's a cook, cooking ware, cooking ware, mm -hmm. cookware, cookware. It's cookware. cookware. Sorry, it's a cookware that we use to boil food, and uh. Uh, yeah. So he uses that as the stove. That on top of that you put, but it makes some changes like. Uh, he also mentioned uh, how you have the ash tray so that it catches the fallen ash mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he did a little bit of, um, of the modification to make that into a tea boiling stove. Yeah, I remember. But it's still man mainly that shape. He even improved a little bit of the uh, thermodynamics, if I'm not mistaken, by putting some sand on the outside yes. and some mud on the inside. Yes. So I assume the mud is more like earthenware, like it's not a, you know turn the water brown mud no no but old times in, let's see i gotta stop using that old times by old times <laughs> i mean <laughs> thousands of years ago the very original way of using that is to have the fire the wood fire underneath mm. like you know between the legs so the in the pot it boil things mm. uh, so his use of this is uh different oh. uh, yeah and uh, like you mentioned he he uh, also engraved, uh, what did he engrave? Uh, wind, fire, and uh, water. What it initially is those elements are related to this uh, water boiling is to boil water, you need fire. And you also need a wind, which means oxygen, right? Mm. So the mm. fire can go and yeah. water sits on top. Yeah. So in his um, engravement, which he is a big uh, lover for Yi Jing, which is a classic Chinese book. Confucius is a Chinese book where his name is from. So, who's from uh, Lu Yu's name? Oh, okay. it's from that book, he quoted that book oh, as wow. uh, his own name. Yeah, and um, and very interestingly, he also put uh, Lu Yu's tea and uh, Yi Gong's soup on the thing. So, on the stove. That's what I was gonna talk, just a little, you know, side talk, if you were ever interested. Mm. That overall, Lu Yu has a pretty cocky, like, a personality. So we, I was gonna bring you back to the question, <laughs> yeah. right? So Lu Yu's T, Yi Gong is Confucius? Who, did, who is Yi Gong is a person that is in the uh, Shang Dynasty, which is okay. around 3000 BC, like a very old, the, uh, the person who was the first a uh, slave then later on by cooking for the king and explaining cooking theories as metaphor of ruling the country he became the prime minister like the 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 hand of maybe the king. A, yeah the hand of the king or a top advisor yes right so all using delicious food yeah, he uses that. We have a classic saying, how to manage a king, uh, uh, country. Uh, means uh, you run a big country like how you cook uh, little seafood. 
<laughs> it's really hard. It's technical, and he is a really good chef. He has so many talks about how to cook food as its perfection. Okay, there's a book about that. That is that is uh, that's incredibly Chinese to uh, metaphorize cooking to not not just to metaphorize it on how to rule a kingdom theoretically, but to metaphorize it on how to rule a kingdom, and it works. Both delicious and the kingdom's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> And also, he's uh, the first one that is uh, reported on book, like on uh, words that to use the this pot thing to cook. Mm. Uh, so, well, he has a really he is always considered. If you mention him to the in the Chinese traditional culture, that is means those very. Prominent uh, political figures that uh, the people loves and everything, not just famous for anything, but he rules that people loves. So, mm. so th this comparison, don't you think, is a little bit like very like how many people would engrave on their paw to say say Americans say uh, Washington something like compare themselves with Washington. You know what I mean? Right. That kind right. of uh, important character. Right, right. It would be pretty audacious. Right. Pretty audacious to do that. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an answer to your question, and I can't come up with a name, but I'm thinking it sounds like something, uh, and, and don't get this the wrong way, but it sounds like something a rapper might do. Uh, right. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> those people who really love to brag. Right, but that's, n but rapper, the, the whole air or the whole whole how should i say the feeling of doing that is different yeah. rappers do that in the song the whole song is probably not a educational stuff another thing <laughs> what i mean it's a, it's a matter of opinion but yeah right 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is he calls his own book jing jing means the classic the something very important in this right. era and uh, so he it, writes a book and he thinks that's Im the... Immediate classic. Exactly. He, he didn't let time judge it. He told people, this is the classic of tea. Yeah. Sit down and pay attention. <laughs> yes. And of course, there's lots of his anecdotes. And overall, give you that little feeling that this is a guy who... Uh, you can call him cocky, but uh, pretty clear of what he's doing and sure. his stuff. The, later on, the emperor asked him to go to the court to be a high official with... Yeah. It's everybody's dream. Hey, he look. said, uh, no. Right? He said, no. No. Wow. Yeah, so had... look, okay. it's one thing to be, uh, you know, cocky or a tea snob, I think might be a, a good term, but it turns out everything he was cocky about, he was pretty right. So that's okay in he retrospect. Has experience, right? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He had the resume to back up his cockiness, let's say. <laughs> Let me see. This is really, really... Uh, the tea, the 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 Wu Yi tea land that we're having is really um, is performing fantastically. I, I I don't know how you deliver all this great content, all this these details. I see her notes down here. It's like a squiggly mess, um, <laughs> and still brew to perfection. It's really something. We did talk about switching brewing roles for this, just because this is pretty heavy duty stuff, and um, we're stuck with this. I'm um, on this side. He's on this side. We don't want to switch. We lack the flexibility to switch sides. So she brews and, and honestly, she knocks it out of the park. So, oh, thanks. so we need to switch. Thanks. This is so still so has that creamy floral with the mineral dark chocolate. Some yeah. some of that deep spiciness still. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Zhu Ba Jie says in mm. Erlo. Early to right? Early to early. Oh, it should probably you mean early to early. Yeah, he has it underneath early to. Oh, right, right, right. Mm. Early to, yeah. It's a pretty traditional uh, cooking word for us. Right, talking about that pot. Yeah, mm. but later on it become the uh, the symbol of power. You see, like uh, usually in the West, you think about the symbol of power is crown, it's sword. You know, yeah, those kind of things. Most of our symbol of power is. Uh, Cookware, cookware, drinkware, teaware, teaware, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Anyway, so talk about this again. I would like to just add a few notes about this uh, stove. In terms of boiling, even today we still have to at least boil water. Uh, mm. In Lu Yu's time, we boil water and tea in the same pot, right? Which mm. we don't do. Now we don't do. Like we at, do it less. At now. least uh, we do that less in some mm. part in 
the world, they're still doing that. And well, just to say here to most of Kung Fu. Uh, Shameless plug, if you check out our right. website and grab some Zongzi Kimen, uh, we do yeah. recommend you boil that one. That's it's a, a boil It's one. a little wrapped yeah. up, little ball of black tea that really needs a boil to kind of get out of its little wrapper, which you boil with the tea and adds a mm -hmm. little flavor. So there's still some when you do that. So check that out. Dark tea, boil your dark tea, boil your white tea. When you're done, you get a lot more life out of it. It's really yeah. fun. Especially Asian white tea boils mm, really well. So good. Yeah. So uh, where was I? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. You were going to talk about uh, early toe and then come back to... Oh. The so pot. The pot. The power. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was talking about the pot. <laughs> Close. Sorry, my Don't bad. Forget. I should keep track of that. No, no, um, no. I didn't mean to distract so you. They boil tea and uh, water all in that. Later mm. on, in Song Dynasty, still the majority is tea and water in the same pot to boil. Mm. Then later on, in the Ming Dynasty, it become more similar to what we have. It's mm. boil water, brew tea. So that's the difference. And that also has many effect in terms of what the stove looked like. So mm. in Tang Dynasty, he's like Lu Yu style using Ding, that kind of pot shape, you know, as a stove. Mm -hmm. It's pretty popular. And even in Song Dynasty, that was still one of the more uh, dominant style of uh, boiling tea. Boiling tea, the stove. Mm. And but they started to have different. Uh, uh, styles of a stove show, uh, showing up and in the Ming Dynasty because there's a lot of change more kettle like uh, mm. stove or even you look at Chaoshan stove all those kind of uh, mm. various uh, style rather than using Ding to boil mm. so and actually um, this also gives you an idea of how great this book has an impact on people as he made a thing of that shape and actually become a trend for hundreds of years. Mm. It, besides it's a trending book and an impact, it also proves another thing is it's pretty practical. Functional. Functional. I was gonna people say, are using if it that, lasted a right? hundred years, it wasn't just a pretty little pot. It must mm. have done the job pretty effectively and been pretty decent. Yeah. You know, and he also I noticed in the trend when I was translating and working on that, that he advocates practical tips you know he's like you can make that out of uh clay you can make that out of a couple other material oh silver but you know yeah. he's like silver is overly fancy and yeah. clay is going to break so go with cast iron yeah. you know he, he advocates you know right. practical tips for getting the most out of your teaware which you know it wasn't the consumer era right you have a, a ding yeah. That's probably gonna last you. You and your is probably gonna pass on. Mm, mm. You know, so you don't want something. Oops! I dropped the ding. Yeah, a ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you don't want your ding to go. <laughs> I meant to say ding, but it didn't work. Ding. Ding. So uh, the part that I put on top is also something interesting that he designed. That we call that a fu. Uh, it's a, a word, a character itself was not so popular used before uh, Lu Yu. He kind of is, has the feeling that he digs through the historical names of various things and decided, okay, this pot I'm gonna call it a fu okay. and use that. And based on the description there, we are not very sure about exact size of that, mm. it, right? And uh, so based on a little bit, how should I say, uh, considering the the ding size and all the other uh, tool size. We're guessing that this pot is around, say, uh, around two liter to three liter is range. It's not okay. overly big. And yeah. also it's not gonna be super heavy because in the end, everything still goes uh, together in a, in a container, in a basket that you're supposed to carry it around. Right. So it's also not very um, heavy. So that's As a the small size, two, three liter is right. pot. And yeah. So you're not carrying around the ding. Oh, right? you are. Oh, All really? his thing goes in a box oof. and the basket. Just Probably it's still pretty heavy. Yeah, just cast not. iron. I'm like, oof, that's heavy. But I guess you're going to bring little. a donkey or whatever. Oh, it's a little donkey. It meant two, three liters is not a lot, right? Mm, pretty good size. You know? Yeah. Imagine our two liter thermos. It's not tiny. Well, it's tall. Mm. Is this a, like, True, is this fatter? Yeah, okay. and his pot doesn't have a lid. 
which is interesting, but because he mm. has to uh, observe the uh, the water and the stuff, so his oh. design of this pot doesn't have a lid. Makes sense. Mm. Uh, for us, we would think uh, first hygiene. You know, if you're born in a boom, a fly goes in. Here you go, <laughs> start over. Uh, and second, when you boil water without lid, it also is very slow, right? In terms of how 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 effectively yeah. you use the heat. Yeah, yeah, it slows down a lot with no lid. That's yeah. right. And the the third is it also could affect the uh, aroma of the tea. Mm. Right, because when you boil the True. whole tea aroma, it will be really nice in the room or in the surroundings. Mm. But for the tea itself, it will lose a lot of aroma. Mm. Mm. So, uh, compared to what I said about the ding, the stove that has been continually used for many, many, many years, this one was uh, significantly reduced or modified in the Song Dynasty already. A couple of hundred mm. years, people already changed their uh, the form of the. Right, pot. to match their needs. Yeah, and mm. in Ming Dynasty, which we do more of a brew, less than of boil, uh, that's just totally disused. And in, Disappeared, okay. Yeah, and uh, in Qing Dynasty, the trendy thing for boiling water is no longer those kind of pot, but, uh, you know, copper, I almost would say kitten, kettle, copper kettle, which oh. is a, a concept that comes from the West. Right, right. So the foreign so concept the, become really trendy. So the pot that went into disuse, what is it? The, the who? Lu? Fu. Fu. Mm. Oh, darn. The fu went in the ding. Ding. Not in, no. like on top. You oh, gotta boil top. that. Okay, okay. Okay, right. cool. Just wanted to straighten that out. So I'm trying to picture it because I don't yeah. think I have a picture the of the fu. The stove is on the top, uh, on the bottom, then the pot on the top. Right, right. Yeah. I'll just check. Like, so that's the ding. And I don't, I don't think I had, there was no picture of the foo in the book. No. no. That's definitely not the foo, and this is yeah. not the foo. We could have drawn that face on mm. the, the diameters and stuff. Okay, just wanted to check that out. Cool. I guess. So that's the first kind of, so we're at the point where we're kind of boiling the tea with these tools. That's kind of where we're at, right? Mm. We haven't got into the serving and the drinking yet. Yeah, next, we're, next episode, we will be talking about the more the roasting and powdering. And I always forget that they actually roasted before. Because it's wet. Yeah, it's humid, right? Mm. The, you mean the environment is quite humid, so they yes. got to kind of dry out the cake before they, probably before they crumble it, but we're going to get into that next week. Mm -hmm. um, that is, uh, let's just, I noticed Greg enjoy. jumped in, so hi Greg, and don't worry about being late. They're all the episodes, as you probably mm. know, but uh, you've made a, a great opportunity for me to remind people, all the episodes are posted on our website. Uh, they won't be available immediately after the show, or maybe not on Monday, but sometime later on Monday, Tuesday. They're all up on the sh on the website with the finished translation. You'll find the rebroadcast of this video here. So no worries, they're all there for you. If you've been traveling or you have missed the first few, or you want to go back and watch some of the old Sunday Tea Book, they're literally all there. Yeah, and Jubaji said the Zhou had a seven day. The Zhou, do you mean the Zhou Dynasty? Mm. They usually have Ding, depends on the uh, title, depends on the class, like depends on, I think title is, King has nine, uh, the oh. Gong Ho Bo Zinan, the Gong, the, the, the biggest the Lord. So it wasn't like modern times, you couldn't no. just go out and buy yourself no, 12, no, no, 12 no, Ding, you might get yourself in big trouble with the King who's, who's yeah. capped at nine. I don't know, times this is super expensive. Super expensive, it? right? Yeah. All right, so cool. So I just wanted to say thank you to you all. We're gonna wrap up this week, a little public service announcement. We are not back next week. We will be back in two weeks. We'll be away for a couple weeks, but we will be back with two, more. Three weeks. Uh, September two. the 11th, you said. That's three weeks. Yeah, so next week we're not here. The week after we're not here. Okay. The week after we're back. Yeah, okay, we're back so September the 11th, we're back. Um, so uh, uh, miss us, please. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. But uh, yeah, so give us a thumb up on the video. If yeah, you want to go to our website and buy some tea, I've, we've got uh, the sip along. I called it the sip along six pack. So it's got one tea from each Chinese tea category, 25 grams of each. It's got the Wuyi tea land that we had today. It's got the next five teas. So you'll be able to sip the exact tea we're having with us and share your tasting notes. Super fun. Mm. That is actually, if you add up all the prices of those six teas, you'll notice that this sip along six pack is 25% off. So that's a great deal. So check that out. 
And um, yeah, and until, oh, I didn't say anything about Discord. There's a link to Discord down below. If you wanna chat with us during the week, let us know what you're brewing. We share tea pictures, we share food pictures, just share some chit chat. Uh, join the Discord in the link down below. And uh, I think that's about it. I'm gonna update some of the links that I talked about. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time. Thank you all for joining us as yeah, always. Thank you. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. It would be no fun without you. It would be, it's just so great to have the back and forth. Jubai Gia, thanks for yeah, all your comments. All and comments. everybody for all your comments. Kula, we love your hearts. Keep those rolling too. That is totally awesome. And until next time, folks, keep, keep steeping. steeping. Ah. What is that? Thank you.